Hello, in this tape we're going to be talking about wire wrapping and uh, some methods for wire wrapping. This particular circuit board that I have shown here is a finished uh, prototype for a small circuit that has been using a perf board. This perf board is already pre-drilled or, or punched so that wire wrapping components can be installed. The holes are all on 10th inch centers. And in this example, the, uh, the originator actually incorporated switches and other components all onto one board to make a finished, uh, finished device. Uh, in EE455, you'll be using something similar to this. This is an example board. This type of board is uh, intended to be plugged into a printed circuit socket. And you can see the uh, edge connector, the gold-plated uh, edge connector fingers. And on this board, there is an example of a variety of different type of what they call machine colleted wire wrap sockets. Uh, the machine colleted sockets are distinct because they're round as opposed to having rectangular apertures for the, uh, for the ICs themselves. What we're going to be talking about is the type of tools and the methods for using these tools for wire wrapping. The tools we're providing are IC extractor, tricolor wire wrap dispenser, and one of two types of different wire wrapping tools. This particular tool, the blue one that we see, is made by OK Tool Company and it has both a wrapping and unwrapping at both wrap and unwrap at different ends. The silver tool is made by Radio Shack and has one end that does both. Now this little uh, contraption here is an IC extractor and it looks something like a tweezers with little hooks at the end that are used to actually grab onto the IC and extract it from a socket. Uh, this actually prevents the IC pins themselves from puncturing your finger when you're trying to remove them because uh, other methods of removal can end up having the IC pins themselves land into your hand. Once an IC is removed, in many cases the pins are straight enough that they can be reinserted. Now this is an example of some wire wrapping that was done on this particular board and for all practical purposes it was done incorrectly. Notice particularly the wire wrap joints themselves are all balled up. In other words, you can't see a clean helix of wire. It looks more like a ball of wire. Although these connections work, they're not an example of good wire wrapping practice. Now here are the two types of tools that we have available that we'll be using in, uh, in your wire wrapping for 455. There's a blue tool again and the silver tool. And each of the tool has a little each of the tools have a little bit different operation, but fundamentally the wrapping aspect is the same on both of them. Wire is inserted in a slit that's been machined into the side of the tool. Down the center of the tool you'll see a hole. The hole in the center of the tool is designed for placement onto the wire wrapping pin itself that you want to apply the wire to. Now here's an example of inserting the wire. Notice the wire went down the spline but kind of jumped out at the back end. You want the wire to lay flat into that spline so that you can apply it cleanly and continuously to a wire wrapping post. Make certain that you don't get the wire wrap wire in the center hole of the tool because that center hole is intended for the, the pin of the socket itself. Now in the OK wire wrapping tool there is a short end for unwrapping and a long end for wrapping so you have to use the correct side. Only one side has a notched spline in it and inserting the wire is very similar on both of the tools. It's inserted into the spline of the tool so it fits flat and straight down the tool and will allow you to place this wire onto a wire wrapping pin. The center hole of course is for the pin. Now one thing that's really nice is if you have a fixture to hold your circuit board, we can provide you with these if you're interested. This fixture is designed for soldering, but it makes an excellent way of holding your board. That's inserted in the tool is now being applied to the post. You should rotate in one direction and allow the weight of the tool to rest on the wire wrap, uh, just the weight of the tool. You do not need to push down. In this particular case, we're using the uh, OK manufacturing tool, that's the blue one, and it produces what's called a modified wrap. And what I want you to notice is at the base of the modified wrap, you'll see one and a half turns of insulated wire wrapped around the post, and then a perfect helix of conductive wire wrapped around the post. It's not balled up like the example that you saw in the other uh, wire wrapping fixture. And the uh, insulated wire acts as a strain relief so that it doesn't get pulled off of the post. Now to remove the wire, you simply put the wire wrapping tool on the joint and turn it counterclockwise and slide it right off. Now this is an example of the Radio Shack tool. We've inserted wire into the wire wrapping tool and we're applying it. Now, 
as all good examples are, here's a bad example. The wire was not allowed to remain into the spline and what happened is it wrapped around the tool and actually fractured the wire as it was wrapped around the post. Make sure that when you put the wire into the tool that it stays into the spline of the tool and it doesn't wrap around the tool as it's seen there. This, this wrap will have to be redone. Now you can see in this example now the wire is down the spline of the tool. We'll reapply it to the post and turn clockwise, just allowing the weight of the tool to rest on the post. No additional force is necessary. Now the Radio Shack tool does not produce a modified wrap. And what that means is, is that below the conductive wire wrapped around the post there is no additional insulation. So you can see you have a coil of conductive wire and it goes down to the uh, bottom of the post and you see no insulation around it. Uh, the Radio Shack tool does have the advantage that you can wrap and unwrap with the same side of the tool so you don't need to reverse the uh, use of the tool to remove wire. Now I actually measure, cut, and strip wire and to keep some sanity in doing that we've provided you with a transparent plastic tricolor wire wrap dispenser which we can refill. Now these units can wear out at certain times so what we'll, are, what we'll want to do is if you have one that wears out we'll replace it. If you have one that becomes empty we'll refill it. This tool not only cuts wire it also strips the wire and it does it in one smooth operation which we'll demonstrate. First thing that you do to uh, cut the wire we've shown already and to strip the wire there is a little not notched metal tab that actually removes the conductor from the wire. This can be all done in one operation as I'm doing with this blue wire. The wire is forced through the, the, uh, the stripping die and then the cutting button is pressed and it actually cuts the wire and cuts exactly one inch of insulation off the wire. And do it again with this gray wire. And put it into the cutting die or into stripping die and you use the button to cut the wire and then you pull the wire through and you have exactly one inch of bare wire.